Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to estimate the Mach number of a bullet or plane by looking at Schlieren photos. If you'd like to see how Schlieren works or you want to make your own setup, just click on this link and it will bring you to my How to Build Your Own Schlieren Setup video. I'm going to be using three different methods in this video and I'll show you how and tell you why they get different results later. The first method uses the Mach wave angle and it's the simplest. The second method uses oblique shock relations and it's a little bit more complicated. And the last method uses the Taylor McCall conical flow theory and it definitely is the most complicated. To get the angles from the images I'll be using GIMP which is essentially an open source version of Photoshop. I'm first going to show you the equations and explain the terms but I'm not going to go through any of the derivations in this video. Here's the equation for the Mach wave angle. This method only really works for very weak shocks as you'll see in the pictures I show you later. The Mach number here is only a function of the Mach wave angle mu, or in our approximation, the shock wave angle. Here's the oblique shock relation, or theta beta m relation. As per the schematic shown on screen, the equation relates the wedge angle theta, shock angle beta, and free stream Mach number m. If you have two, then you can solve for the third. To use this method, we need to know both the shock angle and the wedge angle in order to approximate the Mach number. You can solve the equation numerically, but I'll be using the plot you see on the screen now, which is only valid when the ratio of specific heats, gamma, is 1.4, which it is for air. If you have John Anderson's book, Modern Compressible Flow, then this plot is on the very first page of the book on the back of the cover. Most bullets and airplane noses aren't 2D wedges, they're actually 3D conical bodies, or close approximations of conical bodies. We can use Taylor McCall conical flow equations to get better results than the previous two methods. You can see that the equation is a differential equation. In the second equation, I've just rewritten the equation in terms of x, x dot, and x double dot to make it easier to read. Usually the dots indicate derivatives with respect to time, but here it's with respect to theta. You can solve this equation in MATLAB by transforming this equation into state space format and using the built-in ODE15S solver. If you click on the link here, you can go to my Taylor McCall derivation videos, but I still need to finish the rest of the videos. I'll also have a final video about programming the Taylor McCall code, but I'm just using the code today for this video without much explanation. The way I'll be using the code is by giving it a shock wave angle and a Mach number guess, and then seeing if the resulting cone angle solution matches the cone angle we measure in GIMP from the image. I've taken this particular photo offline, and I've called it Mach 1.9 because the Mach number that they gave me in the description is uh, a free stream Mach number of 1.9. So let's see if we get close to that using our Mach wave angle. Uh, simplest assumption. So all I want to do is use this tool here. This is what I'll be using for every single picture is the measure tool. So shift M or just click here and I'm going to click on the shock wave, hold down shift, click again and drag it out along the shock wave like this. And you can see it shows an angle with respect to the horizontal and this angle shows up down here and you can see it's 34.75. And if I plug this into my Mach wave angle equation, I'll do one divided by sine of 34.75 and this gives me 1.75 so this is the Mach number from just doing the simple Mach wave angle uh, assumption is 1.75 which is pretty close to 1.9 and you can check it on the bottom two on the bottom shock as well here and again it's with respect to the horizontal so this angle is a little bit different just the way that the uh, that the picture is oriented perhaps and if I do this, then I can get 1 divided by sine of 33.33, and that gives me 1.82. So this is actually not a bad approximation uh, initially for the Mach number of this bullet. Here's the next picture that I picked, uh, and this is of a cone. This is actually a cone. It looks like a wedge, but it's actually a cone, according to the website. Uh, and they, this is with flow of uh, Mach 1.7. So the first thing that we'll do is, is do the Mach wave angle and see what happens. So if I'm going to click the tip here and I'm going to shift drag this out along the shock here and you can see that we have 38.59 as the uh, as the shock wave angle here so if I plug this into my simple formula 1 divided by sine of 38.59 I get a Mach number of 1.6 so that's not that crazy if I do it for the bottom here uh, this is now 36.3 so 1 divided by sine of 36.33 gives me 1.68 or 1.69, 1.69, which is much closer to 1.7. Um, so this is actually not that bad of, a pro of an approximation, but why don't we try using the oblique shock relations because it looks like we have a wedge in, in the flow here. So what I can do again is I'll just come back up here and take this shock angle here, okay? And it's measuring with respect to the horizontal. So this is the shock angle, which is gonna be 38.41, okay? And then the other thing we want is the wedge angle which is this, if I go like that, then we get 9.72. Uh, 
I'm writing this down. And then what we want to do is use that oblique shock uh, equation or the, uh, or the figure. And from there, we will match up the, uh, the deflection angle or the, uh, or the wedge angle and the shock wave angle, and then find where the Mach number lies. All right, so I've gone ahead and, and just looked at the, at the plotted, you can as well, and I found that the Mach number based off of uh, the oblique shock relations gives me about two, which is actually farther off than the Mach wave angle was. Uh, and if you actually do it for the lower surface, I won't show you the process here, but it's the same as the top here, I ended up getting a Mach number of 2.2, which is even farther away. And the problem here is that this isn't a wedge, it's actually a cone. So here is the first time that we can use the Taylor-McCall uh, equations to try to get a closer value um, and to see if, 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 it makes a, if it makes a difference. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use the shock angle here, and I'm going to input the guess of 1.7 and see how close we are to the actual cone angle. So for the Taylor-McCall uh, code, I actually, you can see what I did here is I took uh, this angle and this angle as well. So what I did was just I had a point here and, and shift clicked and dragged out to get this second point here and this will give me the angle between the two and now to get the shockwave angle I'm just going to divide this by two and hopefully this is going to uh, fix any minor angle changes or minor angle differences with respect to the horizontal just in case this cone is angled down by a degree or something. So this angle here you can see is 74.62 if I divide that by two 0.62 divided by 2 is 37.31. So I'm going to use that for my, uh, for my shockwave angle. And so if I go to my code and I run it, you can see the shock angle here. I'll input 37.31. Free stream Mach number is 1.7, and we're using a, a air here. And I'll press OK. And then the solutions are here. And you can see that the cone angle is 10.883 degrees. And so this is, and then from this here, if we s squeeze this down, remember the cone angle is actually the half angle here, so this is 20.08. So if I do 20.08 divided by 2, I get 10.04, uh, which actually matches pretty well to that 10 point, uh, I guess it was 10.883. So it's close, it's not, it's not exact, but it's, it's closer than the other ones got. So you can see that the Taylor McCall takes into account this conical 3D flow a little bit better than the oblique shock does. Here I've opened up another picture, uh, same experiment with the same cone, except this time they're running it at a Mach number of three. So I did this angle between the upper shock and the lower shock, took an average, so 43.97 divided by two is 21.985 degrees for the shock angle, uh, or the shock wave angle. And so if I plug this into the simple Mach wave angle equation, one divided by sine of 21.985 degrees, I get 2.67, which is, eh, it's okay. Uh, so let me use the Taylor McCall. Uh, code again. So if I run that here, shockwave angle, I'm going to put in 21.985, free stream Mach number 3, and run it. And the results here show 10.449. If you recall from before, the uh, cone angle is actually about 10, uh, about 10 degrees, or a little bit more than 10 degrees. So that's actually, that's actually uh, pretty close for this Mach number that they gave here. I have this other picture here, and this is of a cone uh, in apparently Mach 2.5 flow. And so here I've done, again, this double angle and then divide this by 2. So 62.13 divided by 2 is 31.065. If I plug that into my Mach wave angle, 1 divided by sine of 31.065 gives 1.93. That's not even close. So let's try the oblique shock calculator uh, or... Uh, equation slash plot and so that for that I need the cone angle so I'm going to lay this down like this take this and divide this by 2 so this is 30.27 divided by 2 gives me 15.135 degrees and if you go to the plot or the equation it gives you a Mach number of, of approximately 3.2 which has now overshot uh, but if we use these uh, numbers in the Taylor McCall uh, equation then we can say that the shock angle we said was 31.065 and the free stream if we put 2.5 then we can see how close we get and here we get a cone angle of 18.263 and we said that the cone angle was 15.135 so we're off by a few degrees so this one 
this one, uh, you know, our calculations could be off. The angles I, I said could be off, or the Mach number that they gave is not necessarily exactly 2.5. Um, so there's a few differences in this case. All right, this one's a little bit more interesting. This is a plane at uh, Mach 3.5, apparently, flow coming from the right. And so I've done this uh, double angle here, which is 60.32 divided by 2 is 30.16, so if I do the simple Mach wave angle, 1 divided by sine of that gives me 1.992, 1.99, which is approximately 2, which is way off from 3.5. So let's try the oblique shock. So for this, I'm going to need the, uh, the angle here as well, the wedge angle. And so here I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to try to pick something that uh, is something good with these first few pixels here you can see the pixels here because you can see it's not going to line up back here because it's it changes uh, shape but I'm just going to try to line up the initial uh, cone because that's all that matters here and if I pick this somewhere yeah kind of like that and we can say that's approximately 33 divided by 2 is going to give us 16.5 okay so if we do 16.5 and I go to my chart and I'm at 16.5 and I bring it up, and the shockwave angle I said was about 30.5. And I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to follow that line up there. It gives us about 3.6, which is pretty good in this case. Uh, and this was just from a chart, so it might actually be closer, or I guess also farther away. Now I'm going to adjust this a little bit more, a little bit finer tuning, so I can get the shock angle for the Taylor McCall. So this gives me 57.3 divided by 2 gives me 28. 0.65 degrees for the shock angle. So if I plug that in here and I'll run it at 28.65 degrees for 3.5. And if I bring up the solution, it gives uh, 20.9 degrees here. So again, if I start here and I fine tune this one a little bit, we can see that you know 38 divided by 2 gives us 19 degrees. So it's it's close ish and it's a little bit hard to tell because it's pixelated here but it gives us a pretty close answer here's another conical flow case where the reported Mach number is 2 so I'm taking the shockwave angle which is 86.54 and we're going to divide that by 2 to get 43.27 uh, if I put that into the Mach wave angle equation I end up getting 1.45 which is way off so let's try uh, to move straight to the conical flow since we know that this is supposed to be a conical flow situation and if I run that through, oops, then we'll go shock angle. We said was 43.27, free stream of 2. We'll run it, and the solution pops up as 25.7 degrees. So if we do this, and we say it looks like that, and 52.38 divided by 2 is 26.19. So we're actually pretty close in this case. Now this last case is the... Um, most interesting one because this one is not actually we're not actually given uh, the flight speed this is the one from this is a picture from NASA that they took uh, the past few months I forget exactly when but I'll post a link to the article where they use a uh, I think a background oriented Schlieren method to get the shock waves coming off of this plane uh, while actually in flight so if I do this angle again you can see I've already done my angle and if I divide it by two so this is 153.85 divided by 2, I get 76.925. If I use my 1 over sine of that, I get something like 1.027, uh, which is a very uh, low Mach number, right? It's just above supersonic, but actually on the website, NASA says that this plane reached a uh, maximum speed of approximately 1.09, Mach of 1.09. So this means that maybe when this picture was taken, uh, it was actually going approximately 1.027 you know, uh, instead of 1.09. Maybe this wasn't its top speed. Now I'm going to run this through the Taylor McCall uh, equation or code because you can see that the plane nose is not just a uh, is not just a wedge. So I'm not going to even bother with the oblique shock relations. I'll just go straight to the conical flow, and you can see that I've done this angle already. So if I take this angle, which is 25.02. Divided by 2, we get 12.51. So now if I plug into my code the shockwave angle, which we said was 76.925, and we'll give it, I'm going to give it this free stream Mach number, the max that they reported, which was 1.09. Run it, and then this is, this is a solution which gives us 12.993 degrees. And if you can recall from just a second ago, this angle here, the half angle is 12.51. So it's actually pretty close. So it seems like 
this was somewhere in the range between uh, between a, a 1.03 and 1.09, a Mach number of 1.03 to 1.09. Uh, and it's tough to tell exactly where it was um, just because these are approximate methods. So to wrap it all up, I showed three different methods that you can use to approximate the Mach number based on shockwave angles or cone or wedge angles. Uh, sometimes they work well and sometimes they don't. They can also be very sensitive to the angles you record from the images. Uh, but this is merely a fun exercise in using information from compressible flow to estimate Mach numbers from Schlieren images. So I hope this was fun and uh, thanks for watching.